wants from you is good deeds. He wants you to leave evil and he wants you to do good. And that's what God is going to measure up for us on the day of judgment. Our good deeds and our evil deeds. So it is very important that Islam as a way of living is a way of life of goodness, of teaching goodness and encouraging goodness and enhancing goodness within the life of the human being. And therefore, the way of living of Islam is really concentrated around that. If we look at the acts of worship, praying five times a day, there are various reasons that we pray. One of the reasons that we pray a ritualistic formal prayer five times a day, one of those reasons is gratitude to God. But another reason that the Qur'an gives is that as-salah, as-salah means the regular ritual prayer. As-salah keeps a person away from evil and transgression. So it's actually a process through constantly being aware and reminding yourself of God, your duty to God, your connection with God, your relationship with God, that keeps you away from doing evil and also encourages you towards the path of goodness. Similarly, fasting the month of Ramadan. What is the reason that is given in the Quran? It says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That you may acquire taqwa. Taqwa means, well you could say piety, but in fact taqwa is a quality within the human being that encourages them to obey God and takes them away from disobedience to God. This is what we could call taqwa. Taqwa is like a person. If, if, if anyone you know, went through, a, you must have gone through a path sometimes that overgrown with brambles. And, yeah, you ever been down a path like that? So how do you walk down a path like that? That's got all those brambles and those things. How would you walk down a path like that? Huh? You'd go carefully, right? So you don't want all those things to rip your clothes. And, this is like taqwa. The person with taqwa has that quality. They are careful to avoid those things that God has prohibited. To do those things that are pleasing to God. So that's the purpose of fasting. It imbibes within the human being that quality. Similarly, we can find that in zakah, one of the pillars of Islam, is something very important that hints at us very strongly that being a good person person is not just about you and your relationship with God. It's also about how you treat your fellow human beings. And there is the saying of the Prophet Muhammad where he said, on the day of judgment, Allah will say to a person, O son of Adam, I was sick and you didn't visit me. And I was hungry and you didn't feed me. And I was thirsty and you didn't give me drink. And I was naked and you didn't clothe me. And the person will say, you are Allah, the Lord of the worlds. You never get sick, you never get hungry, you never get thirsty. You are not, how could I feed you and clothe you and visit you when you're sick? You are Allah, you are the Lord of the worlds. I mean, the person understands that these are not attributes that are, that are of God. And then Allah says, but there was a servant of mine, one of my creatures. And that servant was sick and you didn't visit them. And they were hungry, and you didn't feed them. And they were thirsty, and you didn't give them drink. And they were naked, and you didn't clothe them. So just as you failed to help them, you failed towards me. So this shows that an essential part of being a true believer in God is your character, your behavior towards other human beings. These are very, very important and essential teachings of Islam. This is why we find the Prophet said the believer could be a miser, he could be a liar, he could be a cat. Even a believer sometimes could steal or even drink alcohol. But a believer could never be a liar. There are certain characteristics that just does not exist in the heart of a person who truly believes in God. The Prophet said, Wallahi, by Allah, he swore by God, he is not a believer, he is not a believer, he is not a believer. The one whose neighbor is not safe from his mischief. 
A person who disturbs their neighbor, who is so mischievous that their neighbor is disturbed, this person cannot be a believer. Why? Because the heart of a person who truly believes in God is concerned about the other human beings and indeed the other creatures that are around them. To the extent that the Prophet Muhammad even taught that if you have an animal, a beast of burden, you should not overload it. You should not give it too much that it can carry. If you need to kill, it is allowed to kill an animal to eat, but you should be merciful in the way that you do it, as merciful as you can be. So these are the teachings of Islam that teach kindness not only to other human beings, but indeed to all of the creation. So this is something that is part of that ethos that is connected to be a true monotheist, a true believer. So very briefly, what I've tried to do is outline today those three fundamental aspects that are really, you could say, the defining aspects of Islam. Tawheed, the Islamic monotheism, the transcendence of God, that God is not like anything in his creation, and nothing in his creation is equal to God, that God has sent prophets and messengers, and it is their example that we should follow in order to know how we should worship God, how we should live a good life, and finally, that there is a day of judgment when God will account us for what we have done, and the believers and those people who have obeyed God and followed God's guidance to the best of their ability, they will go to paradise, and as for those who have transgressed and they will find their dwelling in the hellfire, which is a place of torment and suffering. So these are the three essential qualities that the religion of Islam is based around and that the way of living, that way of life that is Islam is a way of life that promotes us towards what is good and helps us to keep away from what is evil. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam which is after the first God's peace be upon the Lord. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Christianity or Christendom is that things have moved on and developed in ways which lead you away from the original Bible message. So when I say I'm a biblical monotheist, what I mean is I want to capture the religion that God revealed to his prophets. I don't want to be influenced away from that by any other concepts introduced from anywhere else. So I've not called the talk Christianity, I've called it the religion of the Bible. And I hope that together we'll, uh, we'll learn, as I've learned about the things of Islam, that uh, we might also absorb and learn some of the things about Christianity. Uh, the Bible uh, brings us God's revelation. Uh, our previous speaker, uh, had three aspects to talk about, and so do I. And uh, basically it's that. Uh, God himself is revealed in the Bible. Uh, the Bible talks about Jesus Christ and the prophets. And it has a mission or a message which it wants to spread to mankind. If God wishes to write a message, a book, it is a message meant to be read and understood. <coughs> and taken heed of. Now, first of all, let's, let's talk about the authority, what I call the authority behind the Bible. What, what credence does the Bible command? What is its basis of authority? 